Thank you, Shelley. Seven minutes. I couldn't clear my throat in the Senate in seven minutes. I'm honored to be here for the Walrus and United Way to reflect on success. Success means different things to different people. For some, it is about figuring out to how to pay the rent or get an old beater of a car fixed. For others, it's about a new research answer to fighting disease or getting into college or even more seriously, finding a job after college. Absolutely essential to success is the robust survival of hope. And no solid plan for success is possible for any human being on this planet without hope. So if success for more and more people is a goal we all share in this room, our job as citizens is clear. It relates to these two questions. How do we keep hope alive? Why is hope essential? Well, hope is, as the Oxford English Dictionary tells us, about positive expectation, desire for a particular outcome, anticipation, aspiration, ambition. For every surgeon and every artist and every poet and every teacher and every parent and every construction engineer or carpenter, every honest politician, every police officer, every soldier, food bank volunteer, every musician, every CEO, every First Nations leader, every comedian, farmer, or violinist, every graduate student needs hope to achieve success. Hope is what makes the hard work that is necessary for success possible and desirable. Without hope, all is lost. Without hope, the will to plan and strive evaporates. Which is why in democracies, we should all judge our governments and leaders and political parties and institutions, commercial enterprises, trade unions, courts, tax regimes, charities and laws on the answer to one simple question. Do they strengthen and justify hope or do they weaken hope and encourage despair. Hope does not appear by accident. Like any foundation for any building in the world, however big or small, hope has to be built, curated, sustained, and refurbished. Equality of opportunity, where everyone has a solid education, insured health care, a basic income, beneath which no one is allowed to fall, is fundamental to hope. So our freedom from fear and from want and confidence in the rule of law, the protection of human rights, all essential for hope to survive. Sending your children to school because you want them to do well in life and not worrying that they might not get home safely is a critical part of the confidence that is the infrastructure of hope. The freedom to invest time and money and effort in a new idea or do a solid day's work for a solid day's pay or work in a lab finding new cures for diseases all depend on hope, both here and around the world. Ultimately, democracy itself, which is the essential framework of hope, only works because people believe that by participating and voting and questioning and expressing their views, they make our society and our economy and our neighborhoods and our city and our province and our country and our world a better place. Hope is the essence of freedom and the avowed enemy of oppression. When hope disappears, it is replaced first by cynicism and then by despair. And cynicism and despair are how fascist and totalitarian dictatorships get rolling over history. And they depend on replacing hope with fear and hate, replacing optimism and freedom with obedience and surrender to those in power. We saw it in Europe in the 1930s, and that produced a war that killed over 50 million human beings. And fascist and divisive spores are in the air in this world, both far away and on occasion terribly close at hand. So hope is the indispensable ingredient for individual or collective success. It is not produced by anger or hatred or blaming others. It is not the result of narrow ideologies of the right or left. It does not grow when conflicting opinions are suppressed. Hope grows when ideas flow. And hope, whatever challenge we face as a country or as a community, as a global family, is the opposite 
of complacency. Beware of the leaders who argue that we have never had it so good, or that they and their party are the only ones for the people, or that only they have a monopoly on manufacturing greatness. Success is not settling for the unjust or diminishing other voices and fresh ideas. Order and freedom with a tilt towards diversity and inclusion is how hope always flourishes. Mr. Churchill said it best, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And courage comes from many things of which the most important is hope. From justice for our First Nations, the battle against poverty, for environmental responsibility, for economic progress and inclusion and equality of opportunity, the courage to continue is about the resilience of hope. The United Way is a key purveyor of hope. It is the United Way's main product, always has been, always will be, which is why it's such an honor to be here with you all tonight. Thank you. <laughs>